this is my first time doing this, guys. So if, if it's, I apologize for any the background. It's just a, I'm just in a in a room in my house with, you know, drapes hanging down behind me. I don't have a green screen, nothing fancy or anything like that. So it is what it is. I appreciate it. Yeah, I owe, I owe, I, uh, I owe a ton to Sean. He, uh, I didn't know Sean other than through my wife before I started at the shop uh, that Sean runs. And I was supposed to go to another shop in the town that we live in. Uh, fell through about halfway through school, a couple months into school. And my wife said that I needed to hit Sean up and see if he would need anybody. And at the time, I don't think um, – I think when the shop opened, when Clutch opened, it was supposed to just – it was meant for five people. They were just going to run it. And in our area, it's its very old school. And so Sean wanted to bring a new uh, – kind of a new feel to Owensboro. And people really bought into it. They still are. So he expanded. And I got lucky that when my other shop fell through, you know, Sean and them were there. They needed people right at the right time. And I got lucky I've been there since. I think that was uh, 17, July of 17, August, late July of 17. Uh, I have been cutting, I think July, August 1st was my first day of school back in 16, and then I graduated July 1st of 17, and I started July 20th at Clutch. So uh, I think it'll be four years this coming, this coming July at clutch and then i guess if you want to add school you know you're coming up on five next beginning of next fall so four is a safe bet i think once you get past a couple years if you've only been out of school for a year you know you like to throw in that barber school time just to make it sound longer but once you get a couple years into being at the shop behind the chair i think you can pretty much cut out that barber school time so four would be four coming up but you, Scott, how long have you been coming, bud? That's what's up. Three years. That's long enough to know whether you want to keep doing it or not. I know that I I worked at a factory here in in Kentucky for several years before I started school, and the only thing that I would do now if I could go back, honestly, just do it sooner. I mean, I'm 31 or yeah, 31, fixing to turn 32. I would have done this straight out of I don't know about straight out of high school. I mean, I don't see why not. Uh, one of the guys here at the shop at Clutch, he. Um, 22, 23. There's a couple guys that we have at Clutch that are under 24. I mean, I think well, I think three, maybe four are under 24 years old. So, a uh, really young group. And it's just crazy to think that, you know, for so long growing up for me, it was, you know, get your college resume together, you know, do your applications, all that stuff, FAFSA, all, the, all that stuff. I mean, honestly, I just paid for – I took out a loan to take school, uh, pay for school. I did that. I worked part time in the meantime, and uh, I would have done that. I would have done that a long time ago. Before I before I had kids, I probably would have done it. Worked night shifts, went to school during the day. Would have sucked for ten months, but oh well. You're a barber after that for life, so. Where you where are you um where are you cutting at? Where, what state are you at? Or are you in the states? I guess. Uh, oh, you're not too far from us then. Yeah, we're. Uh, yeah, you're not. I mean, as far as states go, we're not too far away. Wilmington. 
I don't feel like that's that far. I mean, you're talking a couple hours for sure, but nothing, nothing too crazy. Nothing Google Maps can tell you real quick. Bloomington, Bloomington, Illinois. Two hundred thirty miles. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, there's plenty of uh obviously plenty of hotels around here, even if you you know, stay overnight one night or do a weekend, just come over on a Saturday and then head home, be back ready for work on Monday. Absolutely. It's always nice having people come in. I mean, nobody's come in, obviously, for me. I, I'm bottom of the totem pole, totem pole when it comes to YouTube at all. But it, we've had a couple guys come in for, for Sean. And then I think Coast has had a guy or two come in that watches the channel. Maybe from Lexington area. Uh, so it's cool to see those guys come in. Uh, just kind of interact with some barbers from different areas. So it's been nice to see a few people roll through. You, how many, uh, how many barbers are at your the shop that you work part time at? I appreciate it. Yeah, if only, if only I could, if only I could pan over to my left, you'd have Coast to my left. Uh, JT Fade It, which doesn't he doesn't do YouTube. He's one of the the younger barbers at the shop. He's uh, I'm trying to build his confidence. Maybe uh, at some point get him with the camera behind his chair because he he's very he's at clutch anyways he's probably the most meticulous barber that we have at the shop and it shows i mean this this stuff even at a young age is it's pretty crazy and then to the his left is sean so everything to my left at the shop i mean it's just nothing but uh standards that i have to live up to because those guys are killing it four yeah, it's a. Uh, I think when I started, I was number seven. So that even even when I started at seven, that was the most in our area. I think five was probably the most that that any shops uh, in our area had. And even those, some of those people were part time. Uh, even then, and I think let's see, that was like I said, almost four years ago. Now we've got. We pretty much added one extra every year. We're at ten now, and so what? Um, what about in Illinois? Are you guys getting hit? Is he putting a ton of restrictions on you guys right now? The governor? Are you guys getting hit real hard with shutdowns or mandates and stuff that are? What up, Franco? Franco, what's up with you, man? Where you where you at? Where are you coming from? Yeah, we actually uh, we are waiting on the contracting group to start on our new shop. We it's a the building's already existing, but it's gravel floors, no drywall, no insulation, no bathrooms, no flooring, no plumbing, nothing. It's going to be completely brand new uh, for us. And so it's pretty much the same size as the shop we have now. We have uh, what used to be, we got our side. There's a wall that separates us from what used to be the salon, uh, clutch salon, which we don't use now. We're just, it's this space. We're going to move to a new spot. It's going to be as big as both of those together. Uh, so we're pretty excited. I think it'll be room for, uh, we'll have room for 15 chairs total if we get to that point, which we're hoping there's no reason why we can't, can't eventually. And then from there, I mean, you're talking way down the line, but new shop, second location, something like that. So. You want to do beards? At, uh, gotcha. We um honestly we never have we got the initial email from our barber board here in Kentucky back when we shut down the very first time in March. 
last March. Other than that, I don't think that we have gotten any update. I think there may have been an update when we came back yeah, at the end of May. But other than that, we have gotten absolutely nothing from our barber board. Uh, surprise, surprise. So we're just doing face masks. We have not – I don't even – really, there's not too many people even here in Kentucky that do the face shields uh, except for healthcare workers that I see when I'm out and about. I mean, it's it's just your typical face mask or the the buffs, the, the neck sleeves or whatever. Other than that, that's about what we're doing. We did start off doing a lot more, and gradually it just, you know, we stopped, stopped doing as much of the extreme stuff. I, we were doing keeping record of who was coming in, temperatures and all that stuff. Uh, but obviously we're well past the repeat stage of, People coming in, see, we're just going to be doubling up records over and over again. So we just we cut it out. We're wearing our masks. We're giving people the option to uh, force them. But yeah, it's going to be nice. The shop we're now it's uh, it's like a little shopping complex type area. And I think the building itself was built back in the 70s. So it's obviously got its issues, repetitive issues, especially like air conditioner units, annoying. And then when we move over there, because everything will be brand new, um, floor to ceiling will be brand new. Um, and then the best part that I think we're all happy about is the – the root, the ceiling, we're like eight foot ceilings. We're at eight and a half, maybe nine tops. And I don't even think it's nine. I think it's eight. We're going to be moving to that shop there and it's going to be open, you know, 18, 20 foot ceilings. What up, Jackson? Hey, hey, what up, boss? I saw that cut in the live feed the other night. That's, uh, I'm glad you grew your hair out. I think you look a lot, I think it looks a lot better. It makes you look a little bit older with that, the texture. Instead of taking the top all the way down, um, fifteen chairs. Um, when it's when it's busy, absolutely, it makes it uh, it makes it seem uh, busier because it is busier. I mean, you're just multiplying the number of bodies in there. But I think the other thing too is when you've got ten guys at the shop, especially for us, the way we do it is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday are usually our slower days. We rotate guys. That's that's everybody has a day off during the week, and it's always it's it's a Monday, Tuesday, or a Wednesday. My day has always been Wednesday. Some of the guys have Monday, some of the guys have Tuesday, some of us have Wednesday. But then Thursday, Friday, Saturday, we're pretty much all there except for Sean. And so what ends up happening is you got ten guys there, and it's just nice because there's so much that goes on outside of the shop with ten guys. That even if you're not busy, having that many guys there to talk to, to catch up with on a daily basis, uh, to, to go back and forth with. I don't know how much you guys go back and forth with each other at the barbershop, but we we are nonstop back and forth. If it's sports, if it's music, doesn't matter what it is, we're always going back and forth with each other. So just simply because the way it's set up was we have barbers, five barbers on both sides of the shop facing each other. So, I mean, it's two sides of the shop. It's not one big line down one side. And so we're always back and forth chatting it up. So even if it's not busy from a uh, standpoint of actual customers in the shop, it's always seems to be busy because of the number of barbers themselves. So what up, Joe? Uh, Joe, we do not have an, uh, we don't have a set date yet. We are waiting for, um, we are waiting for the contracting group to, I guess, give us that date. What we've heard is there's another, we pretty much fell in behind another, uh, I want to say it was a, maybe like a Panda Express with that contracting group. So as soon as they get done with that build out, they'll start on ours. Uh, so we're hoping, 
we've been telling ourselves we're hoping March. Like March 1st would be nice. Obviously, anything sooner than that would be uh, sweet. If it's not, then, you know, it's not, and we'll be we'll be fine regardless. We're not dying in the spot that we're at now. It's just going to be really nice to get to a new spot. The only thing is, is we do have to be out by July 1st, so as long as they get us done by then, we'll be good. Yeah, three barbers. See, I, I don't know. Like, it's weird. I mean, as soon as I got to Clutch, it's been seven or more from the moment I got there. I don't even know what. Uh, oh, okay. Yes, sir. Coast is in the building. So, yeah, I, I always try to – I got to race Kale to a lot of stuff. Kale's got me in, in just about every number category, of course. Uh, but me and Kale go back and forth. Um, I always try to – if he's going to do a review on something, you know, I, I always joke around with him that I try to get stuff out before him. So I don't think he's done a live yet. And I'm not going to lie, guys, I did not have a cut ready to be put out today. And I told you guys that I'm going to do something two days a week, Wednesday and Sunday. And so we say only time. Yeah, yeah, we don't worry I mean. My only post on, on IG are thumbnails, so I definitely need to start posting more. I need to start taking more pictures of the post cut and posting them. Do that not only on IG but in my actual YouTube videos as well. I think my after after cut, cut, after cut is not where it should be, so I need to work on that too. I need Kel to hold me accountable. But yeah, three barbers in the shop. I, that... I don't think I could do it. Not after not after being in a shop with with ten or or seven and then going up to ten now. That's I don't know. I mean, obviously, I think you could potentially stay maybe busier depending on where you're at. You know, if you're in an area that doesn't have a lot of barber shops and there's only three of you, then you've got full reign of all the cuts in that area. But man, having ten guys, I mean, we go play basketball sometimes in the summer. We may not get a full five on five, but we, I mean, we usually get a decent group of guys to do that. Uh, anytime we go to barber shows, which I haven't been to any yet. That was something else I wanted to get with you guys. Uh, who all has been to any of the barber shows? Uh, which ones were your favorites? Cause I haven't been to one yet. I'm going to try to go to at least one this year, even if it's the, um, the Connecticut one. And so try to get an idea from you guys who, who likes which one. The most, and if you've been to any, but yeah, going to going to anything event wise, or going out to eat, anything like that, just having ten guys, it's uh, it's just nonstop fun. I mean, honestly, I mean we go back and forth with each other at times. Stuff gets a little heated, but it ain't nothing. By the end of the shift, we don't shake off and dab each other up and head out the door greet each other the next morning so all right somebody's gotta have let me make sure I didn't miss nothing All right, y'all going to have to ask me some stuff. I'm a terrible talker off the hip. I mean, I can talk for days if I get asked something. But if I got to come up with something to talk about, it could be crickets in here. So y'all got to give me some content. What, um, I guess one of the biggest things I want to talk about, too, was did anybody pick up anything for Christmas? Anybody get a new loadout of clippers? Anybody pick up anything from – I picked up a ton of stuff from – not a ton of stuff, but several capes from Illusion. I picked up uh, – if I could meet any of my subs, who would it be? Well, it wouldn't be Coast. I got to meet him every day. I've been cutting with Coast since barber school. I actually started – I started August 1st. Kel started uh, – that's Kel is Coast. 
I st- he started a couple days after me. So I've known this cat since uh, we're coming up on five years now. Actually, it probably has been five years. And so I don't want to meet Kale. I have to see him too often. Um, I don't know who. I don't even know who also who subs to me, honestly. Uh, I've already met Dre. I think Bazio follows me, so I guess Bazio. Uh, which hopefully happens sometime this year at one of the shows once they open back up. So I think that's a pretty respectable one, Bazio. Who supports me? Uh, JS. JS Fades is usually first. There's Brandon Hamilton, which some of these guys are not in here. And so when y'all watch this back, just know I noticed that y'all weren't in here. Uh, JS Fades, Brandon Hamilton. You got to splash Polo in there every now and then. And I, I Polo liked the comment on IG. Actually, he said he did the 100 emoji, and he ain't in here. So. Paulo, I'm looking out for you. Um, let's see. There's one. I know there's one other one I'm missing. I got a lady that's been in my comments that has been talking about how she cuts her grandson's hair. And she watches my channel to learn how to cut her grandson's hair. So I thought maybe she'd be in here, but she ain't. She, you know, I have no reason to be in here. It's not a tutorial, so that wouldn't make any sense. Uh, we're thinking about putting in more chairs in the shop. We got a place on you. Uh, I definitely think it can make you busier. Uh, putting in more shop. if if you have the traffic flow, because basically what happened at Clutch is we. Started off with a group of guys that were on the books he had. And then we had a couple guys that did walk-ins. Well, what happened was as the shop itself got busier, mostly through social media is a huge, that's the biggest free advertisement that you can have. Tell everybody you can on Facebook, have everybody that you can share it, comment, all that stuff. Um, once the guys that were doing strictly walk-ins got busier and built their own clientele that continued to come back, then we moved them to appointments, which was me and Kel, uh, me, Kel, and then one other guy. When me and Kel started, or, which is Coast, hopefully you guys are picking up on that, Coast is Kel, Kel is Coast. When me and Coast started, we started, um, he started in June, I started in July. And we did walk-ins until the end of the year. So we picked up that whole back to this end of summer cuts, back to school cuts, all the Christmas cuts and Thanksgiving cuts. We built our clientele up and then we moved to Booksy uh, at the start of that new year. Through most of that year there, we just continued to use that Booksy app. We kept getting busier. And then once we started having trouble keeping up with the walk-ins, that's when we brought in our next guy. And then he started as walk-ins only. And then as he got busier, we moved him to appointments and we brought in another walk-in person. And so we're not walk-ins only. We do primarily work off of appointments. All the guys at the shop now are on the Booksy app. But of course, with 10 guys, multiple days throughout the week, most of the time, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, there's usually five or six of us there. Somebody usually has an opening. It's very rare right now that we are turning any walk-ins away. I think even this past week when we were slammed, I don't know that we had any walk-ins get turned away. And, of course, it's one of the busiest times of the year, Christmas and Thanksgiving. So I think we did a good job of that. So, yeah, you can definitely become busier by adding more people, but you have to make sure that those people are doing the necessary things to help the shop. A person can't just come into the shop and just sit there and expect, the shop to be busy. You've got to do your part, hand out cards. You've got to, anytime you, you know, cut a hair, if you can take pictures, post them, post the shop, tag the shop, um, anything like that. Use social media to your advantage. And then hopefully by word of mouth, because that's the thing is, you know, you cut somebody's hair and that person tells uh, one or two other people about it. 
and then they come and get a haircut and then they tell one or two other people about it. Well, next thing you know, you've got several people that are coming more than several and it just starts to build up. And that's what happened with us. We had seven guys, then eight, then nine and 10. And so our word of mouth is a lot more than what, you know, a shop of three might be, but you might be in a, in an area where a shop of three is, you know, adequate. Uh, I don't even, I don't know the exact number of people in Owensboro, but I mean, 10 barbers is that's double any other shop in town. But we're, I mean, other than I think the pandemics, well, obviously that is, that's caused some issues. Um, I'm not going to over, I'm not going to let that completely take away from uh, how, how busy we were. But I think once we get to that new shop, just the location in the area that we will be moving to, it's going to be more the main road there in the, the town where we're at. We're going to be front facing that, a brand new building. We're right off near the bypass. Um, so I think once we move in there, any type of down shift in, uh, in how busy we've been because of the pandemic, I think it's going to, it's going to start to work its way back up. So. Tell Sean to not let Chris know you guys are using books. Oh, okay. Oh no. Hit it. Look it up. He, um, uh, Sean's not taking necessarily new clients, but uh, he definitely is making exceptions for anybody that hits him up as far as on the channel or, or IG or anything like that. So he'd make an exception. You, I don't think you'd sneak up on him. I'm trying to think. Actually, I'm going to go through here. I'm going to look real quick at who who my last couple comments have been. I know I mentioned, Kel mentioned that, who who supports you the most in the comment section. I would say it would have to be, it was JS, Brandon Hamilton. Um, I think it's Kathy Garden. That's the lady I was talking about. Uh, Diggy Blends, that's another one. Diggy Blends is usually in there. Trey Burks. Uh, Polo. Oh, yeah. Well, I won't even we're, – we're definitely not diehard booksy um, supporters by any means. We just hadn't found anything yet that we – That's been worth going. It's got its glitches for sure. Right now, right now, the most annoying glitch. I don't know if you guys will be able to see this or not. Probably not. Nope. It's not going to work. Anyways, my Booksy app has uh, 1,774 notifications on it. That is because, for whatever reason, there's a glitch on Booksy right now where every time any barber at the shop gets a notification we all get the notification so that's pretty annoying polo is everywhere he's everywhere but in here right now or at least he's being quiet if he is in here i went live with polo on, polo on ig one night uh that's crazy i can't imagine at what he's 16 Yeah, that's a good point, Coast. Uh, at the time, see, in the town we live in, like I said earlier, it's very old school when it comes to barbering. A ton of uh, of your your grandpa type barber shops, and so nobody was doing nobody was doing appointments. There were literally barbers in our area that had capes that said, "Real men don't make appointments." So when we got on Booksy, you know, of course, what doesn't make sense is in our area, barbering is staying old. In every other industry, uh, everything's moving forward. Everything's moving to appointments. You got to have appointments to do just about anything. You got you go to AT and T. You go in there. You make an appointment. You come back out, and 
you wait your you know you wait to your turn, but then you have a set time you 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 know you can go in. And so that's what we did. We we started with the Booksy app, and people picked up on it, really liked it. There was no more. I know even whenever I was going to another shop in town, you, know, you would go down there and you would wait. I mean, thirty minutes would be thirty minutes, and you'd feel like you got in quick. An hour, hour and a half, two hours sometimes on like a busy Friday or Saturday. Like no one has, like nobody has time for that anymore. There's so much going on um, that those wait times are. They need to. They need to become obsolete in the industry of barbering. We should be able to do better than that. So now, of course, it's funny. Those same shops that had those capes when the pandemic hit, and they told us we had to do appointments. Now everything's kind of started to work its way back to normal, and yet those same shops are still on the booksy app now. So it's funny that you can. You know, you can have shops that'll clown you for doing something, and then when they do it themselves, they're not they're not going away from it very fast. So obviously, they're they're liking something about it, and so so yeah. I mean, if another app comes open, that that's the problem. Is man, you got ten guys. Uh, several of us have been seven of us at least have been there building a clientele for three plus years, and so it's going to be. It's going to be a very rough transition, I think, if we do try to switch. Yeah, hey, hey, because you hate you. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's I mean, and that's what it is too. You know, you still. I don't have anything against any barber that uses like the VAC system to each his own. Uh, I prefer using. You know, I don't. It doesn't bother me not having the VAC system. I've never had anybody not come back or not come to the shop because I don't use the VAC system. Um, but I, I think that there are so many shops here in our area and just Kentucky and, the, and I would assume the industry in general that are just holding on way too much to what used to be. And there, I mean, if it's working for you, then I mean, more power to you, but in every other industry, pretty much, things are moving forward. There's no reason why we can't do the same. So, you know, you've got. I don't have a. I don't have a corded clipper on my station now. Like that would be completely unheard of, even ten years ago. Um, you know, obviously now with the the two forty five power mat and the power clips, you know, I can. I don't lose power. And I gain all the benefits that come with, you know, being cordless. So, so it's just a matter of mindset. You know, these guys can, they can stay back and cut 10, 15 minute cookie cutter haircuts all they want. That's fine. I'm going to take my 30 to, you know, 45 to an hour if it's a full hair and beard, bald fade enhancements anything like that and you know you're gonna be able to tell the difference in the haircuts there's nobody no one in our area i'm not saying no one can do a good haircut in 10 to 15 minutes no one in our area is doing good haircuts at 10 to 15 minutes so you know they can continue to do stuff that old way use you know old clippers loud back systems and you know i'm going to use quiet cordless clippers with the power mat and the the uh, power clips and keep on rolling. Yeah, the power mat is probably, I think, I mean, obviously, besides cordless clippers, the power mat's probably, that's probably the, one of the, the best things. All right, Coast. Hey, I'm glad you were, you were one of the five. I appreciate you, Coast. Um I think other than the the cordless clippers, I think power mats probably the the biggest uh, advancement in the industry. And I think if you have any corded or cordless clippers at all, I know that it seems like a, a fairly expensive upfront cost, and maybe it is. But I promise you, if you don't have a power mat and you don't have the the power clips then 
Um, Michael Payton's there. What's going on, Michael? Happy holidays, bud. Um, then I think you definitely – uh, how many cuts can you do in a busy day? Okay, so if I did all 30-minute spots and I blocked off an hour for lunch, because that's another thing, uh, make sure that you – I don't know if you guys have ever been told this by any of your instructors. Make sure you set aside time for yourself during the day, especially if it's busy. Now, I get it. If you've got – if you're slow, then allow your lunch to fluctuate based off of the flow of the shop. If you're busy, then get you a few extra cuts. But if you're if you're busy or you know you're going to be busy, make sure you block off the lunch. Take some time for you. Get off your feet a little bit. Rest your back. Get something to eat, and then you can get back to it. But in a busy day, um, what is it? I think 14, 16. I think 14, 30-minute cuts. Because we're there from 9 to 6. So 10, 11, 12. One, two, three, four. Were there nine hours? So I can cut eight hours. Technically, I guess it could be 14 to 16. Now, on average, how many do I cut? On a day to day basis, um, eight to 10, six to 10. I'll say six to 10. Because I, I mean, obviously, we've been slower with the pandemic. Before the pandemic, I would have said 8 to 12. But I'd say now, I mean, you could probably drop down to even some days and say 4 to four to 10 is average for me, which is uh, it's a big fluctuation there. I think at the end of the week, once you average in your busier days at the end of the week, you're looking at probably more 8 to 10. But I, I won't lie and say that, you know, some of the days earlier in the week – like, I, I fully expect, I don't know about you guys, I fully expect these next couple weeks to be slow. I mean, we literally just cut so many heads the last two, three weeks before Christmas. And it's just the nature of it. You'll have multiple busy weeks when it comes to, like, a holiday, and then it's going gonna, it's gonna to drop off and die off a little bit, and then everybody else start needing haircut again. A couple weeks, and you'll be fine. That's a, so make sure that's another thing. Make sure that you, uh, you're either putting money back or you're making sure that on those busy weeks, you don't spend more than you need to, because then on those slow weeks, you, know, you want to make sure you have some stuff back. The power mat though, yes, is, uh, definitely the best investment I have made. Um, for one, I mean, just a simple factor, just keeps your, if nothing else, it keeps your station uh clean not clean tidy like organized that's the word organized it keeps your station organized when you turn around there's slots for your clippers when you turn around every clipper usually i put back in the exact same spot so when i turn around and i need to pick up a clipper i know exactly where it's at every time turn around it's there it's always always in the same spot there's no turn around and just put your clippers down wherever you know, clippers are turned on their sides. They might flip over, hit the blade. Everything sits down in there, and it just keeps everything, you know, nice and neat, organized, and you can keep going. Because that's, I mean, that's probably one of the other things, too, is time is money, of course, in our industry. So if you don't do appointments, one way that you can still give a very good haircut with good quality is to be proficient with your time. And one way to do that is to be organized. So make sure that you, you know, you are not sloppy with your station. Everything has its place, everything. I mean, you don't have to be OCD about it. I'm not necessarily OCD about it, but I do instinctively keep my stuff organized because of the power mat. So and I actually have, I've got the detailer, the wall cordless detailer adapter coming Hopefully sometime this week. I think they actually already shipped it. Vancouver. Are you up there with Polo then? I don't know if you know Polo or anywhere near him, but Vancouver, are you guys getting, are you guys shut? Y'all not shut down then, right? In, in Canada. Vancouver. 
But yeah, it's um, I've already looked at Booksy for the next two weeks, especially this week. This week right here will be the worst. The week after Christmas is probably. I bet you can go back and look at it if you have any type of booking app or if you keep up with your how much you make. I, I keep up with how much I make every day, so I can go back and look at it. I would say the week after Christmas is probably one of the slowest weeks that you will have. Maybe not every year, but it's going to be slow because you've got those people that wait for a long time. They just got their cut at Thanksgiving. Then you got the in between. You got all your people that come and got haircuts for Christmas. Now, you know, there's nothing, there's no holidays coming up. You know, it's not really till, I mean, your next holiday that you just have to get a haircut for would be uh, Valentine's Day. That's not till February. Obviously, hopefully, we're not slow until then, but. Uh, our schools are still shut down. I think in our area, the 14th, I think, maybe when they go back. So I, I'm hoping that we can get some type of oh, – okay, you're still, you're still working. Okay, sorry. I misread your messenger. But I'm hoping with the kids going back to school in our area – Sometime around the 14th or so, I think they said that's the end of most of the schools in our area's first semester. So when that second semester starts for middle school and high school and, and, and elementary school and stuff, I'm hoping that causes – because we never got – we never even got that back-to-school rush. I mean, that last couple of weeks of July or last week of July, first couple of weeks of August is usually pretty busy. It's not the most enjoyable time because it's a lot of kids' cuts. Uh, and if you got, you know, crazy kids that could, you know, take a toll on your body, but we never did get that because of the pandemic and stuff. So I'm hoping if they really are going back, you know, middle, middle of January, that they're going to start doing some form of parents are actually going to get their kids out, get their hair cut, and that'll help the shops pick up a little bit. I appreciate the five of you that have been in here. Uh, like I said, this is my first live feed. My channel is not that big by any means. So I wasn't sure if anybody would even stick around in here. I thought I thought we may get an appearance in here by, by Sean. I think he's got some family uh, Christmas stuff going on. So I'm hoping that everybody... You guys that are in here, did you guys get – you guys load up for for Christmas with Barber stuff? Man, I've seen some IG posts from some people and some of the stuff they got for Christmas. My goodness. I thought getting a couple of Barber capes and uh, a new adapter for my, my camera and I got the Beam, the Beam XL compressor. I thought that was, you know, I thought I was getting some stuff. Somebody had a power mat. It looked like they had every mat that they could that they needed to fill it up. Every power clip needed to fill those. The beam compressor, multiple illusion capes. I, I mean, I wish that'd be nice. I'd take every bit of it, but I didn't. I didn't quite get. I got the. I got the AirPod Pros. That was. That's probably my most expensive present. So. But yeah, I. Uh, I don't know. I may. I'll, I'll do one again. I'm hoping. We're at. I'm almost at 700 subscribers. Uh. Oh, yeah, Sean always Sean Sean's got my haircut figured out, like most haircuts, I guess. But obviously, working with Sean for a while, he's not the one that cuts it every time. Usually, Coast is honestly, if I had to say who my who my barber was, it probably would be Coast. Um, but I think Sean's probably cut it. I mean, more than enough times to know what he's doing with it. I got a couple of spots back back in these areas here that are. 
that are interesting, but he always finds a way to work them out. And so, yeah, I appreciate it, man. Um, so we're at 700 subscribers. Uh, I think by obviously July, I've got to hit a thousand. I think we'll, we'll get to that. And so maybe once we get to, maybe once we get to 800, you know, we'll do another live feed. Um, nine and then of course we might do another one with a thousand and it i might i may see if this gets any type of traction on the channel itself and if anybody does then you know it may be something i try to do a little more often cut back on on pushing out videos that may not be the best and just do some live feeds and see how it goes so but guys i appreciate y'all tuning in um Hopefully people didn't think that I meant four o'clock. I did say three central standard time. Hopefully people figured that out. But uh, James Scott coast has already left. Appreciate you guys tuning in. Um, I greatly appreciate your all support. I got a new adapter coming in for the camera tomorrow. So it's going to make the, so it's camera and then I have an adapter that fits the 50 millimeter lens to it. And the, lens, the, the adapter I have now makes that, that 50 millimeter lens zoomed out. And then whenever I come in and I do my editing, I have to zoom it back in. I bought an adapter that takes that zoom out. And so my haircuts are going to go from being framed like this to being framed, you know, perfectly in there. So hopefully you guys can tell a the difference there. Um, but I will. I'll catch you guys next time. Um, appreciate it, guys. Uh, keep sticking with me. I, I'm going to obviously keep uh, trying my best to mimic and copy off Coast and Sean as best I can. They're they're doing their thing, and so hopefully we'll we can catch up at some shows. And you guys, y'all keep grinding it out too. We're going to get through this pandemic crap, and then everybody's going to be rolling again. So you guys take it easy. We'll catch you next time.